The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and across from me, the college guru, Malik Hill. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I know a little something. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert. I know, it's more football season, but I'm trying to figure something out. You're the college guy, so we're going to keep it that way. Um, and tonight is a big night. We got the NBA draft. I don't know if it's at 7 or 8, to be honest. I, I haven't looked. The thing that I wanted to bring up first right away is do you like the new two day draft for the NBA? Uh no. Okay, good. Because I, I hate it. It yeah, makes having no it sense. During in the middle of the day, who's gonna watch? No like, one. What, what are the ratings gonna be? What do they no think one. is gonna happen? Normally, you know, in, in years past, because the NBA is only two rounds. Two rounds. We can't get that done in one night. Normally, because it's two rounds, I'll stay up and watch the second round. I'm not, like, super intrigued by it, but there's a couple guys usually that are down there that are, like, college studs that people don't know if they're going to break through or not. I want to see where they go. If Bronny James gets drafted in the first round, what are they going to do tomorrow? Yeah, exactly. Because that, that's the entire intrigue of the second round Yeah, for, like, mass audiences. Right, majority. Yeah, we know there will be good role players, but, yeah, that's for the sickos. And again, like, what time is it tomorrow? Like, is it in prime time again, or is it? It's while everybody's working. That's all I know. See, that makes it's it. Going, e- it's coming on while everybody's working. That makes it even worse. I don't get it. It's dumb. Anyway, so I probably won't even watch the second round now because I'll just wait till Friday or whatever to get. A full recap. I'll be bored at work, so I'll probably be watching and texting you live updates. Well, I can't. The Pistons traded up for the 50th pick, Joey. Are you excited? Uh, Probably not. Probably <laughs> Are not. you excited? Probably not. And they, they drafted another, uh, oh, what is it called? Stash and uh, when, you, when you draft a, a European player yeah. and they never come over. Let's do right. that again. No. Okay. So we're going to do our mock draft today. We're going to talk about prospects because we haven't really talked about any. Um, again, it's it's a sort of weak draft class, um, but I think there's some depth to it. And obviously, like there's always going to be somebody that surprises you. Uh, so it'll be curious to see who comes out of this draft class as a guy in a couple of years that turns out to be great. I don't know, uh, but I don't. I don't have any confidence in any, any, any one guy necessarily. But I feel like there's a lot of talent in a lot of these guys. Just some guys you like. Yeah. It's it's, it's nobody you love. It's weird. It, it's oh, weird. I think that there is one person we love that the Pistons aren't going to take that we want them to take. But Yeah, but even him, yeah. like. We don't expect him to be a superstar. Right. I don't know. He could be an all-star. Maybe. Maybe. Depending on uh, the situation. All I need is, like, a top-level shooter at, at that point. But anyway. And he. He could be that, which is even more frustrating. Right. While they won't take him just because of his age. Well, in the we'll, stu- yeah, we'll get, we'll get there. We'll see. We'll I'm see. already getting mad. I'm already getting upset. You got till 8 o'clock tonight to, to find out. Um, actually, it'll be like 8.30. Anyway, um, so we're going to do our mock draft as usual. Um, if I don't know if we want to do trades in this one, um, but we can talk about potential trades because I think there's a lot of, of potential here. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what people are necessarily looking for because it, it's one of those drafts where there's like a domino effect where like if one team wants to move up, it might affect a lot of other teams. Um, and I, I just don't know how that cookie's going to crumble. And we say that every year too, that a lot of trades are going to happen or there could be a lot of movement and then there never is. So I'm, I'm hopeful we've already had a little bit of movement. Is Atlanta going to make the first pick? 
<laughs> Who do they want? I heard an uh, update yesterday that they hadn't even seen Alex Saar up close. Exactly. Like they which, haven't, he hasn't come to Atlanta. <laughs> which leads into your favorite guy going number one. So I, I don't even know who that is. That's the uh, that's the news. This but, is going to be a mess. Uh, Can't wait. Because I spoke of that trade, we have to mention it. The New York, New York Knicks made a blockbuster trade yesterday. They did. With the Nets. Um, they sent literally every draft capital <laughs> it felt like they had. Yeah, this is kind of what happened when Brook when Brooklyn got Paul Pierce and, and KG mm-hmm. and Jason Terry, and they gave up all their picks. Yeah, but this feels better. Yeah, I don't know. This feels like more it. like the Gobert trade to me. Um, a guy that you're not a hundred percent sure if he's gonna break through, but he's been good in the past. And so the Knicks got Mikhail Bridges. Finishing the Nova Knicks, which everybody loves. Yes. Which is hilarious. Um, for, is it four unprotected picks, first round picks? It, it was four unprotected, one protected. Right. And then there's like a second rounder, a yes. future first. and I think that's it. Yeah. But it's a lot. <laughs> Maybe a pick F- swap or something. When you first look, it's a, it's a ton. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, Brooklyn has needed something like this. Yes, so that finally admits after Kyrie, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Cam Johnson, the Nets, and Ben Simmons, <laughs> the Nets are resetting. It's Cam Thomas Chuck season. Yeah, it will be yeah. for sure. Um, so they're probably going to offload all their veteran guys, um, and they got a healthy stack of picks, and now the Knicks are all in. Yeah. Pushing it all in. Uh, they have a chance to still sign OG Ananobi, I believe. I saw someone say they could still sign OG and Hartenstein. Right. They which would probably wild. have to take, like. Yeah, they'd have to buy in and get a pay cut. Yeah. Which it sounds like OG might not fully buy into it. So he might be tough, but I think Hartenstein might, um, which would be interesting. And I like the deal for both teams. I don't know how you feel, but I, I think it's perfect for the Nets. They. Fully get to reset. Some people think that Claxton is going to be gone. I kind of tend to think that Cam Thomas and Nick Claxton are going to be like their guys because they're the young guys on the team, and then they'll make picks throughout. Um, I think they're going to try to re-sign him. That's my opinion. Um, and then the Knicks, does this put them over the edge? I don't know. Like He's a great defender. He knows the guys, so they're going to have a lot of team chemistry, the, I the think. The chemistry is instant. Mm-hmm. He can shoot at a very good clip. When he's not seen as the guy, right? he can shoot like close to 40%. Mm-hmm. Like you said, he defend. He does everything yeah. the fans want, everything Tibbs wants. He is the culture that they, they, they've built. Yeah. And if they can, uh, again, their biggest thing is staying healthy. If they can stay healthy, the Knicks are going to be right back in the mix, which I think is, is pretty exciting. So Yeah. And I think this is like the official first time Brooklyn is resetting. Yeah. Because they've been either like going back to the middle or trying to keep contending over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They finally decided to uh, hang it up for now. And again, they got a good haul of picks. So I think that's the perfect time uh, to do it. And we'll see what they can get um, in the future. But the other wild part, I believe. So there's been talk about Houston going after Kevin Durant. Um, Those talks have kind of like calmed down some, but yeah, they still want to tr- want to trade for someone. I heard today like the, the Mavericks might be going after Kevin Durant, so maybe Kevin Durant's available, maybe he's not. But I know that the one important thing, Houston and Phoenix, they they made a trade already where they gave they swapped a bunch of picks. Yeah, and they the basically gave Phoenix's picks back to them, and I can't remember if. There's some ties to to Brooklyn there, yeah. Where there's Brooklyn picks involved, and obviously Brooklyn resetting is going to make those picks very valuable. Or maybe yeah. Houston still has those and, picks. And Houston is trying to make room for someone, yeah. If, even if it's not KD, right? They're trying to add another piece, or somebody's going to have the Nets assets that they gave up um, previously, which could be very good down the line. So, just interesting stuff um, going around. Hopefully, more stuff happens tonight. But no further ado, let's get right into this mock draft. We didn't decide who's going first or who's picking what picks, but 
I don't know. Do you want me to pick first? You want to flip a? Do you don't have a coin? I do don't. you want to flip something? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you want the Pistons pick? Kind of. Okay, then you you well, get the odd picks. The, the the main reason that I said I'll take number one is so that you don't have to to pick your guy. I'll just well, take you the don't have one. to. Well, you're picking who you want. You don't have you don't have to pick. Okay. Do you want? All right. That's yeah. a, that's another good thing. We're gonna pick what we think they should do. Exactly. Right? Okay. All right. Then never mind. I don't care. Yeah, we're not going by. There's not even a consensus. Okay. <laughs> that it, yeah. All right. That's fair. So. I'll still take the Pistons pick because uh, I just can't. I don't want any of that bad juju in the. Although we're gonna pick the same basically, so whatever you want to do, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> Is there any pick that you like want to make? Not really, because I have no idea what's happening, and neither do you. <laughs> so you go with number one, and you pick number five. Okay. Because who knows? Okay. So I got Atlanta's pick, and with the first pick, go with what you feel. What's yeah. right? Yeah. If if I'm the Hawks, I'm taking Alex Sar. So would I. He's been the projected number one for the longest time. He's French, which is the new key term for a lot of people. If you get a French player, he's going to be good. Pistons have learned that's not the case. Um, shout out to Killian Hayes for getting cut from the French national team. Sad, sad, sad. He needs um, to go to the darkness of truth with Aaron Rodgers in the offseason. Yeah, but... Figure yourself out. I think Alex Sar is... Honestly, perfect for the Hawks. Like, what could, other French prospect has like real tools besides Alex Sar? Alex Sar has something. Yeah, like you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a mobile seven footer. He's got crazy long wingspan. Um, I think he could get like a little bit better on the defensive side, but again, tall, big, long yeah, arms. That's where coaching comes in. Yeah. Um, he's already got a little bit of NBA size, not crazy. He's still thin, but he could get a little bit bigger. And I think it's time for the Hawks to, I mean, they've already talked about retooling and I think Clint Capella's kind of run his course and I think he could go somewhere. I think they could, uh, I can't remember if his contract is up or not, but either way they could either let him go trade him somehow. Um, and just get a new center in there, especially if they want to keep uh, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. I yeah. think that's the perfect way to go about it and still be in the playoff hunt next year. Now, if they want to totally blow it up, they could go totally differently. Um, because right now, apparently, it sounds like Alex Sarda doesn't even want to work out for the Hawks. That was part of it, is that he's sold on being a Washington Wizard, which to me seems Crazy. wild. <laughs> Insane. Good for the Wizards, but yeah. Yeah, I, I don't understand it, but maybe there's something that he likes about the Wizards. But if I'm the Hawks, I'm taking Alex Sar. I like that pick a lot. Uh, I feel like I'm going to go against what I told you <laughs> before <laughs> we started this draft. Just because I feel like the Wizards fans don't deserve this, but the organization deserves to keep suffering. Oh, God. Because of all the horrible decisions they've made throughout their history. And Bilal Koulibaly might work. Mm -hmm. He 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 showed some signs. But yeah. I, I think Denny Avdia needs to go. I think he actually could contribute to a winning team. Yep. But he's stuck in Washington. I Man, they're, they're just, they're pathetic. The Wizards are pathetic. Yeah, they're in trouble. And with the second pick, they're taking Zachary Rizache. Just because they're they're gonna go with what everybody else says, they're gonna go with their Johnny Davis instincts. And he's six nine. He's the he's the French Kevin Durant, Joey. You know, they did said, you hear that before? They said basically the same stuff about Denny. So Zachary is even better, according to what people were saying. Okay. So just the Wizards are gonna be the Wizards in there. I don't like Zachary. Yeah, he can prove me wrong. He has a decent jumper. He can't really dribble. Yeah. He's athletic enough, but I I just I don't care. He's a French player though. He's French. Yeah. And th that's completely soured on me after yeah. what we've had to deal with. I was going to say it's 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 a lot different for Pistons fans when you talk about French players um that Art Victor Wembanyama. Yeah, like, but that plays into the sadness is that we missed out on the best French player. 
Yeah, the like the 2000s and early 2010s run on French players when there were the Tony Parkers and the Boris Diaz, like Nick Nick Batum. You, you go to uh, Michael Petrus. Mm-hmm. Like, you had a run of guys almost every year where you could find one French player that was, like, productive mm-hmm. and wasn't overly, like, super hyped. Yeah. Ever since the hype train has started on French prospects, it's just gone overboard. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not jumping on ever again. Can't do it. So the Wizards get a guy that I don't believe in. Good luck, Washington. You'll probably continue to suck. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. All right. I'm up with Houston. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to say with Reese Sache is he's become my problem with the NBA right now. There was an influx a couple years ago about the tall, lanky, do everything guys. Yeah. He has, he seen... has all everything you want in a guy that looks the part. Yeah. And all we have to do is teach him everything else. Yeah. And we've seen a bunch of guys be able to do it. Kevin Durant was one of the, the early ones, but then we've seen. He was built ready to go. Though. Right. That's we've seen good. Giannis, things like that. Giannis is the once in a lifetime. Yeah. My problem with it now is you're now getting guys that are just tall, lanky, and they're okay at everything. They're not good at one thing. Giannis was a big risk. Even though it, he was picked at like six, six, 16th or 17th. Right. It panned out, but it took him a while. Um, and then there's been a lot of these guys now that they don't they don't fully work out. Who who was the guy that was uh, two years away from being two years away? Everybody. The Brazilian guy that was... Caboclo. Yes. Bruno you, Caboclo. Yes, Bruno Caboclo. The yeah. Bruno Caboclos. That's what I'm calling him from now on. Yeah. To me, that's... Zachary Rizache is better. Mm-hmm. But he's another Bruno Caboclo, and the other French guy is definitely a Bruno Caboclo. Yeah. And so when they don't have one thing that they're good at already, and they're that kind of prospect, it just makes me really nervous. Now, if if Rizache was like an elite athletic specimen or like some elite dribbler, ball handler, slasher, or an elite shooter, I would feel a lot better about it because – then even if he doesn't fully work out at developing in his other levels, he's got that one thing that he can do. That's the thing that scares me about these kind of prospects. So I just wanted to bring that up. He's a good shooter, a good athlete, and nothing else. Right. And people are banking on the fact that he's going to become elite in all those things, which is very tough to do. I mean, even, again, Giannis, he hasn't developed a shot. He's an okay free throw shooter. He now. he happened to have that thing inside him. Yeah, that most other prospects don't have. Mm-hmm. Like he he was going to be great. Yeah. So, just a little rant. Anyway, Houston at number three. If this is how the board falls, I think Rizache would actually be really good for Houston, uh, just because I think they can afford more time because of the veteran trades that they made uh, last year. But in this spot, like you have Donovan clinging on the board. Reed Shepard, Buzelis, Stefan Castle. I don't know if any of those guys fit what they want to do. So if I was Houston, I ultimately would trade out of this spot um, because I don't. I just don't think it fits with where they want to be. Um, now I've heard some rumors that they might take Donovan Klingon and get rid of Sengun, which sounds That's insane. insane. Yeah. Um, but I guess maybe if you think you can get a bunch of stuff for Sengun, and I don't know figure something out i guess but that that would be a you don't risky get better play. when you do that that doesn't make you better that feels like a really risky play i would if if that was if i was hurt hearing rumblings of that i would tell the pistons to get on the call with houston and be like we'll give you durin we'll give you beef stew give us Shen- I'd, i'll take Shen- yes Gun. i'd take him right now yeah <laughs> yes 100 percent. give us off Shen- um so anyway if the case doesn't happen they don't trade out and they stay where they're at i think you should just take who i think is best available and take reed shepherd just take a good shooter i agree and you know he can play alongside van vliet he could be better than van vliet then you have a discrepancy between who plays the three is it jalen green is it dylan brooks maybe it depends on the situation um but i just think reed shepherd is the best player on my board personally. And I would 
I would take him. He's an elite shooter. He can play the one or the two a little bit. Um, apparently, he has an insane vertical that nobody knew about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just I like his game, and I think again, if anything, he can become a really good shooter in the NBA. Get himself open, and if he excels anywhere else or um, gets better anywhere else, that's just a plus. So I'd take Reed Shepard. I agree. San Antonio at four. You got Victor. You got the alien. Reed Shepard is off the board. Mm -hmm. What would they want? This hurts. They've been looking for a point guard. This hurts as a Pistons fan. I don't think there are any high level point guards on the list. Okay. Like, do you? I don't think. I don't think you take Rob Billingham at four. That's too high to me. That's true. True. He's that's too high. They have been linked to Stephon Castle. He's more of a two guard. Um, yes. He can play the point, but. He could. I still think he has a lot to improve on. Mm-hmm. And I think with having Victor, you have to speed up the time a little bit. Yeah. So at four, I'm going Dalton Connect. Okay. A guy that's like 20, going on 23 almost, I think. Or t- going on to 22, either one. But high level shooter, high level athlete, knows how to create a shot knows how to get buckets, mm-hmm. and can improve as a defender. He has the wingspan. He plays hard. I think he steps in and immediately gives you almost like 16 to 17 a game. Yeah. And they've taken risks on, like, the Kelvin Johnsons, who's good enough. Um, Devin Vassell got his money. He's yep. going to be there. Mm-hmm. But I think Dalton Connect is a better scorer than Devin Vassell. Yeah. Devin Vassell is more of a 3 and D guy. But they you, could, you I think they could play together. I, I think yeah. I think Connect could play the shooting guard True. in uh, the NBA. Yeah, you need another guy that can give you points and give you, like, swings of momentum mm-hmm. when the offense kind of goes, like, dry. And it's not all Victor. Yeah. So I'm going Dalton Connect to San Antonio. I Honestly, I really like the fit. I think th- they're still looking for a point guard, um, but they have Trey Jones right now. Yeah. Um, which he's he's done serviceable. But I can then, see them probably making a trade to try and get somebody. But, but if you tr- if you pair up like Trey Jones, Devin Vassell, Dalton Connect, there's talk about them getting rid of Keldon Johnson as well or being packaged some way. Um, but if even if you keep him, you have Dalton Connect, Vassell, Keldon Johnson, who I think has improved his three point shooting, um, and Victor. Like that's a pretty potent offense. Now, are they going to be great on defense? Maybe not on the perimeter, but they'll have moments. Victor where is they an, look elite. Victor is an elite defender. Yeah, uh, like you said, Devin Vassell. Um, so uh, yeah, they could have their moments. Um, but I think that would be a fun team. To be It'll honest. be really fun. Yeah. So I, I like the pick. I, again, we know. I think we've mentioned it. We would be upset because we like Dalton Connect. We would like him to be a Piston, but this would also be an amazing drop for the Pistons to. Be able to get guys that I really like as well outside of Dalton Connect and Stefan Castle and Donovan Klingon. The hard part is I don't know where I would go if I if this happened. Now Donovan Klingon, he's been all over the place. People are saying he could go as high as one, which would be wild, but not out of the realm of possibility. I love Donovan Klingon because he's seven foot two, rim protector, really good passer, uh, does a lot of the little things, uh, shows a lot of competitiveness. He's kind of just that missing piece of what we want Jalen Duran to have. Um, just a little bit more um, of that competitiveness, um, a little bit more of the defense, a little bit more of the IQ for passing and things. And I still think Duran could get there, um, but Donovan Klingon is, I think, a little bit more ready for that. Can't really play them together, so that's the hard part. You'd have to figure out a way to... You either decide that Duran's going to be your backup center, which I don't know if I like. Yeah, I, don't, um, I, don't I would know. rather trade him while his value is high. Yeah, um, or you go with Stephon Castle, which is a similar boat with. Well, he kind of is competing with Jaden Ivey. I like Stephon Castle. He's a little bit bigger. He shoots pretty good. Can handle the ball. I think he would pair really well alongside Cade. He's a better defender than than Jaden Ivey is. And that's the hard part. Like, who do you want? That's betting on another guy that doesn't have the offense yet. Right. And we've seen flashes of it at Connecticut where he could shoot good, but at the same time, he's had really bad games too. 
Um, so then that's the thing we've been battling with with Ivy. So I love Klingon and Castle, but they have signs of the same issues that the guys we already have. And these are your only options to you at this big. Just because I like, I do like their upside. Um, I do want to take your opinion into it. We'll kind of both talk about it since it's the Pistons. Um, Cody Williams is the other option, I think. Yeah. Um, he fits more into uh, the three position. He's got the raw offensive ability. Yes. And he can shoot it. He can drive some. Yeah. And again, like I talked, the thing that scares me with the Pistons is guys that are raw. Now, I know we've seen Cody Williams' brother sprout into a star, potentially. Um, and he's built similarly. There's things that I don't love about. He he doesn't look super smooth with the ball, which makes me nervous sometimes. I know that's kind of dumb to say. Um, but it just makes me a little nervous. Um, like, he could be another Cam Reddish. Or he could be, I don't even, I'm not going to go with some crazy comp. Yeah. Or he could be like a quality NBA like score. Right. Let's just say Chris Middleton. I don't know. Yeah. Like so, it, it, there are two ends of what it could be. Yeah. So I would say like those three guys would be like my top options. I'll say it now on the podcast. If the Pistons draft Matas Buzelis. It's going to be a fun night. I might Tyson make household. a sell the team t-shirt. <laughs> and you know, I, I feel bad. I, I do. To a certain extent. Because he could go and be great. He could become something great. He's got a lot of upside. And if if he goes to the Spurs and he becomes like some star with Victor, I'll be fine. I just don't want the Pistons to go that route right now. They just got new management. They brought in Trajan. They're getting a new coach. I want a fresh start, but I want a smooth start. I don't want to start making these tough adjustments right away for a new team. I'd rather them get guys that are more NBA ready and get some decent off season moves and just have a steady incline just to get that spark of confidence for this team. Cause I think that's what they need. I think they need to get, they need to have a season where they get like ninth in the East. Or, no, because that, that, that's the play-in game. I need them to get 11. I need them to miss out on the play-in game <laughs> so they could feel like they're there and they just missed out rather than being at the bottom and whatever. I want to see a little bit of fire in this team first before we start saying, oh, Trajan's the truth. Like, now we can trust him. It's like Brad Holmes. He was making some moves here and there. Again, there's it's deeper draft, um, so you can – get away with it but it's like at first we're like brad holmes making a lot of crazy moves can we trust it as we've gone on we've trusted it more i just need a, a i need a steadier incline is all i'm saying i guess for the pistons um is there anybody else that you would like for the pistons to draft at five i would probably go cody williams okay but yeah it's a it's up to you yeah looks like you're, you're circling the yukon guys yeah so i, I like them the most um, the other one that I, I've said again, if I would rather take Zach Eady than Matos Buzelis. To me, that's that's too much of a stretch. It's, it's too far. I get it, especially if Donovan Klingon is like, here in this this scenario. I wish Zach Eady would be Yao Ming two point oh, but yeah. it's it's not happening. Yeah, but um, I think that would be fun to go after Zach Eady. Uh, again, you'd still have to trade um Jalen Duran. So I think. If I'm the Pistons, as much as it hurts me, because at one point he was one of my few untouchables, but as the season progressed, I could understand the gripes. I think I can't pass on Donovan Klingon. I think the Pistons need an anchor. And Jalen Duran, I, I still have faith in He's him. He's a double-double machine and an athletic beast. Yes, but I think, I mean, we've seen... Andre Drummond be a double double machine for his career. Um, not to say that Jalen Dern is Andre Drummond, but I just like the defensive mindset from Klingon that he's already has. Plus the way that he passes the ball, the way that he plays, um, basically free throw line extended, can play pick and roll. 
sees the court a little bit better. I think I think he could be good if we have Cade. Maybe we stick with Jaden Ivey. Maybe we get another shooter and be able to move the offense through Cade, maybe through Donovan Klingon a little bit just because of his experience, and then also have a defensive anchor in the post. And that leaves us to be able to have a stretch four like the modern NBA likes, not beef stew. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go with Donovan Klingon. Because I think if if this draft... If you make this pick, that means you have a lot of moves coming right after. Yes. Yes, I understand that. Um, But like I said, I think the Pistons, again, if this was to fall like this, they would have to make moves anyway. The only way they don't is if they get somebody like Cody Williams. Because he fits pretty good into their slot. You move Asar down to the bench and go from there. But almost any other position, you're going to have to... Decide to either move from Jalen Duran, Beef Stew, or Jaden Ivey. So, but in this case, I'm going clinging. So this makes it kind of easy for me mm-hmm. with Charlotte at six. They have Lamelo. They hit on Brandon Miller. Yeah. Um, I think they're they're trusting Mark Williams to be their starting center. Mm-hmm. And who's who they have at their four if they traded PJ Washington? Oh, Grant Williams. I don't. I can't remember if he. Started, or they were playing Miles Bridges. That yeah, that too. So I think there's a there's a spot at the two. I can't even remember who their starting two was. It was well, Terry Rozier was there, but yeah. I don't know how much more they're invested in him. I think they're gonna look for some some defensive intensity. A guy that's gonna play hard, hit open shots when they need it, mm-hmm. and he had some really efficient games at UConn. I'm going Stefan Castle yeah. for Charlotte at six. Mm-hmm. I think he slides in at a good spot. He gives them some things that they don't have. And he doesn't have to be rushed to be any type of star. Right. He can play a role. Yeah. Now, like, there's there's a world that he ends up being Isaac Okoro for the, for the Cavs, mm-hmm. where Isaac was, like, high-level defense, super athlete, all types of potential, never reached it with the Cavs. Yeah. I like Stefan Castle more, mm-hmm. and I think Charlotte could be a good spot for him. Mm-hmm. Especially with a uh, new head coach, Charles Lee coming in, yeah. So yeah, Stephon Castle to Charlotte. Yeah, I think that's a uh, that's a good fit for them. Like you said, keeps the pressure off of him. Doesn't have to be the guy. Um, the other thing I want to go back to really quick with the Pistons, my dream scenario: trade with either Utah or the Knicks. I know that might sound crazy because people don't like this draft class, but Utah has ten and twenty nine. I would love to have those two picks, I think, personally. And then the Knicks, Knicks have 24 and 25. To me, I love that spot in this draft because there's some guys that you can too. get. A lot of people say, oh, they hate that. Why would you move back in a bad draft class? Again, I think the whole draft class is subpar. It's called a bad draft class because the lottery is bad. Right. It's not because the 20s are bad. Yes. And again, I think it's a deeper draft class. I yeah. think there's guys back there that have some question marks but could be just as good as some of these top guys. So I would love that in the perfect scenario. Back to the actual mock draft. Portland is on the clock. Portland is still a mess. Yes. And I don't know when they're going to be good anytime soon, to be honest. I think Chauncey needs to leave Portland. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't. Yeah. It seems like it's not it's working out. Work. Um, Scoot could still work, but not the best rookie season. Yeah, Scoot has some upside still. Shaden Sharp has a little bit upside still. And who knows with DeAndre Ayton. Listen, dominating. I They're I'm probably going to They're yeah. probably going to move on from Jeremy Grant again. Um which is probably a good thing. And because they're in such a mess, this is where I take Matas Buzelis. I was just about to say <laughs> because, is this the Buzelis spot? <laughs> yes, because what do they have to just lose? Him and Shaden Sharp just running and catching lobs and trying to dunk on everybody. Right. Um, the other thing is they have multiple picks in this first round. Um, so they can take, you know, a riskier pick and then go for a, maybe a little bit safer later on. Um, but ultimately, no matter where they go, they're going to be right back here next year. So go with the upside. Hope for the best. I think this is a good spot for Buzelis. I don't hate it. Yeah. I do not hate it. Eighth pick, San Antonio again. Jeez, just reaping all the rewards. This is this is an interesting position. Mm-hmm. And it sets up really nice for them. Mm-hmm. 
Because even though he's coming off an injury, you got the second international guy that I trust. <laughs> a high-level passer. Mm-hmm. Maybe the like highest IQ guard in this draft. A guy that's just going to keep it, keep your offense moving. Mm-hmm. I'm going Nikola Topic. Topic. Yeah. Whichever way you say it. At the eighth pick. I've heard Topic. So you come out four and eight with Dalton Connect and Nikola Topic. Yep. Plus Victor. Yeah. And Topic is known for his pick and roll uh, offense. Could you imagine the chemistry between Topic and Victor Wimbenyama? Yeah. When you get to just throw it up to a seven foot five with a twenty foot wingspan. Yeah. Nothing easier. And Topic yeah. is big himself. He's what, six five, he's, six yeah, six? He's, I think he's He's listed as six six two oh three. Yeah. He's probably like six five. Right. I actually but either way, big point yeah, guard. Great size, eighteen years old, mm-hmm. high level IQ. And hey, I'd I'd love it. Yeah. That would be a great haul for the Spurs mm-hmm. at four and eight. All right, we got Memphis up next. Memphis has been linked to moving up in this draft. Apparently they really like Donovan Klingon. Again, a lot of people do. Um they want to get a center, it sounds like. Sounds like they would rather put Jaron Jackson back to kind of his more natural four position. Um, so nine is a really weird spot for them. You would be a madman if you took. I'm thinking the about it here. I'm thinking You'd about be it. A madman, but this is your draft. The this problem. Is your draft. So this is their problem. Is they have. I guess it's not that big of a problem. There's a lot of point guards at this spot in the draft. A um, couple guys that are. Uh, I don't know, like Ron Holland. I don't know how I feel about him. Jacoby Walter, don't know how I feel about him. This is, I think, where I would take Cody Williams if I'm Memphis. Hmm. I think, again, if John Morant comes back and just is fine next year, Jaron Jackson, um, maybe they make some sort of offseason move. There's talks, too, about Marcus Smart maybe being on the move again. But, again, I think this team is okay. So I think they can take a more project guy. Um, and try to develop him into something. I mean, we've already seen them develop Brandon Clark pretty well. Um, he's become a good, solid role player, and I think Cody Williams can obviously be, be better than that. Um, but I, I think they're in the spot where they have some room to try and uh, develop Cody Williams. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Cody Williams here. Okay. Utah at 10. I'm going back and forth between two guys. One of them can be an electric scorer, kind of like another Jordan Clarkson. Mm-hmm. The other one is like a high upside forward. But they kind of took that last year mm-hmm. with the kid out of UCF. Yeah. So, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm going to I'm going to do it. Rob Dillingham is going to Utah. Okay. Now they've they've got several young pieces that they're trying to figure out what to do with, mm-hmm. but I don't know how much longer Jordan Clarkson is going to be in Utah. Yeah, he's a fan favorite. Kids dress up as him going to games. <laughs> That's cool and all, but you got to re- replace that bench scoring eventually. And I think Rob Dillingham is the natural sixth man replacement that okay. comes in with the second unit and just lets it fly. Okay, he's an extremely creative scorer. He has crazy handle. He has deep range. Uh, I think Utah would embrace him very quickly. Hmm. So, yeah, Rob Dillingham to Utah. Okay. Um, Chicago is up next. Another troubling team. Um, I don't know what they're going to do in the offseason. Um, are they going to move They got on? their point guard of the future. We know that. I <laughs> They got him. I like Josh Giddy, but. I wouldn't say he's Listen, the point guard I, of the I've future. I've trashed on him more than I probably need to. He's not a terrible player, mm-hmm. but he was so bad in the playoffs that it made it look much worse. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Zach Levine. There's still all those swirling rumors that somebody's going to try to get him. Um, I can't remember how much longer DeRozan's on contract and Vucevic. Um, so they're in a, a weird spot. They... I know who I'd take here. They definitely should not take Tijon Salon. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, unless you want to go with uh, the whole idea of Portland being a mess 
and you just take them anyway. But or like Washington, they're such a mess. You just take them. Uh, but I don't. I don't think they're in that position necessarily. I think Chicago's okay. Um, man, did they? Well, if they're moving on, I'm assuming they're going to move on from Zach Levine. I'm going to go Jacoby Walter. Wow. I think that's a bit of a reach to some people. Yeah, to some people, but this board is all over the place. Yeah. In my opinion, I think he's, again, he's kind of one of those three and D kind of guys. Um, a little bit undersized. Um, but I think they just need knockdown shooters. And if they just set him in the corner, uh, I think that's good enough. You can let DeRozan still work the middle of the floor. Um, Josh Giddy is, you know, just a playmaker. Um, so I, I think fundamentally it would fit pretty well uh, to go with Jacoby Walter. Yeah, maybe it is a little bit of a reach. But, again, I don't love any of these guys in this range necessarily. So I'm going to go with Jacoby Walter for a slight upside. I'm about to pull off a Sam Presti special right here Okay, with the OKC pick at 12. You don't need a, a young guy <laughs> that's super raw. You're trying to go for the finals. Oh, no. You got Alex Caruso. Oh, no. You got SGA. If you're doing what I think you're doing, I, 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 I'm, I'm excited. I'm not taking who you think I'm taking. Okay. This all lines up perfectly somehow because he's he's ranked 12th on ESPN's big board right uh, now. Oh, okay. I think he slides in at the backup point guard spot. He gives you offense. He gives you passing. He can defend. He was a star at Providence last year. I'm going Devin Carter Okay. from Providence. Yeah. I get that. Listen, two years ago, we didn't know why they took Jalen Williams at 11 or 12 from Santa Clara. Mm-hmm. I think this is another home run pick for OKC. Okay. A guy that comes in and produces very quickly. And by playoff time, he's ready to come off the bench and give you production. Yeah, he's one that's been rising up a lot of boards lately. Um, could even get into the top 10, I think, if if people started getting a little yeah, bit crazy. So I, I think Devin Carter to OKC is perfect at the one, this spot. The, the one that I thought you were going to go with, which I think you figured out. Zach Eady, I think, yeah, I, actually. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing the that. more that I think about it, though. I think Zach, Eady they would, could use a big man next to Chet, but I, I, I wasn't going Zach or, Eady at 12 or even just a better backup. I couldn't do it at 12. Like, I think they played Mike Muscala last year. Well, Jalen Williams was their backup. Big. Yeah, I guess. But I don't know. I, yeah. I think they could. I, use. I think that's too high for Zach. Eady, yeah, personally. That's fair. Um, OK, Sacramento. Man, that was a disappointing season for them, wasn't it? Um, well, they they had some guys get hurt. Right. Like, yeah, they had some issues. Um, but they're also another one of these teams kind of in a a weird spot. Um man, do they take Zach Eady? <laughs> this is the Zach range. Zach Eady and <laughs> Demonis. It's a bonus. That'd be fun. That's that's wild. That'd be fun. Um, no, probably not. I don't think any team is taking Zach Eady with the intentions to start him. <laughs> no. That's the other part. Yeah. But like I said, it's your draft. Mm-hmm. Um I like Tristan De Silva. Um do I like him more than Ron Holland? I I don't know. I, I feel like they could use a wing. Um yeah. Harrison Barnes won't be there much longer. Right. And they're they're in a similar situation to OKC. Like this this could just be a, a nice bench piece for them. Um so I I guess I'll I'll go with Ron Holland because of the upside again. They're in, they're in one of those, you know, valuable spots where their team is pretty locked in and they should be good. Um and I think they can take the risk to go with Ron Holland. He can be um kind of an athletic freak. He he had many um, a lot more bright spots than Matas Buzelis in yeah. the G League. Mm-hmm. He's a freak athlete. Yeah. Had a better jumper than I expected and created all, on off the dribble some. Right. He's coming off a little bit of an injury. Um, so he missed the last, what is it? 19 games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's shown some decent signs that he could, again, he's a guy that I think he's shown enough of his one skill that he can do well, that he could maybe produce on the other guys or the other skills if he gets the right, um, development. So I'll go with Ron Holland back to Portland 14. We got Portland again. 
They got dominating, so I'm not taking Zach Eady. Don't forget about Tijon Salon down there. I'm not taking Tijon Salon. He's the ninth rates prospect. Who he's cares? Gonna, he's going to go in the lottery. He probably will, which is a mistake. I'm going to go. Hmm. Can I go for a reach here? Short draft. Because if you want a center that gives you everything that DeAndre Ayton doesn't, which is defense and constant energy, on a young, like, running team, mm-hmm. I'm going to reach. Okay. I'm taking Eves Missy from Baylor. I don't know if there's really reaches in this draft, to be honest. True, but in the teens, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm taking Eves Missy. Okay. He is a, like, phenom young defender mm-hmm. at seven feet tall, high-level athlete, goes and goes and goes nonstop. Yeah. In the pick and roll, he's not going to be a pick and pop guy, but he can catch lobs. I think he gives you everything, like I said, the opposite of DeAndre Ayton. Like, DeAndre Ayton's production isn't winning games for Portland. Mm-hmm. They they need a young center that can, like, be an anchor. Yeah. And I think Eves Missy can be that. So I'm going with him at 14 to Portland. Okay. All righty. I think Miami, to me, this is easy. They hit on Hawkeyes last year. Yeah. Um, they they got pieces. They got – um. Nikola uh, Jovic. Yep. They got him. Mm-hmm. They got some young dudes they're still investing in. Yep. They're still a young team. They got Tyler Hero. Still got Jimmy Butler so, for now. Is this the time or are you going with somebody else? No, they got Bam there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he Speaking of Bam, breaking news, he just got a three year, $166 million, $8 million extension. Yeah, I know that. Good for Bam. Was, coming up, people were talking about him probably getting extended. So that's cool. Um, to me, they just they, they need a point guard. I think Tyler Hero is better set at the shooting guard position. Um, I'm going to go with a knockdown shooter. I'm going to go with Jared McCain. That's exactly what I was thinking. I feel like he fits in perfectly for this team. Um, competitive. He has experience from the college game. Again, like I said, he, he was one of the best shooters in the country, I believe. Yeah. Um, and that's all they need. Like They have other guys that are going to take away from Jared McCain. So he just kind of has to do his job, pass the ball around, get the offense going, knock down some shots here and there. I think it fits in perfectly. To me, yeah. I would just – Kind of like uh, uh, like even better shooting version of Gabe Vincent. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, giving them that. Right. So, yeah, I like that pick. And, again, he kind of has the that competitive, hard-nosed Miami-type player mentality, I feel like, too. Yeah. So, Jared McCain to Miami. 16, Philadelphia. They are in a weird spot. They, I think they're not going for Paul George at this point now. No, or it Paul sounds, George said he didn't want to go to Philly. I don't know. Sounds like Golden, Golden State, State yeah, is the that's lead ramping one. up, which is wild. Mm-hmm. Which means Clay Thompson so, is going to be on the move. Who Philly would want here? They got Maxie and Embiid as their key pieces. Mm-hmm. Tobias could be out. They don't Dijon really. Have, they Solon. don't really. <laughs> just throw him into the starting lineup. <laughs> Zach Eady next to Joel. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> Would you go with a young upside thing or try to reach? That's the question. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. What? This is this is a tough one. Mm-hmm. Depends on where they want to be. Yeah, I don't know what Philly would want here. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'd go after Bub Carrington. Like, Johnny Furphy, has a, he's a like quality young shooter. He's 6'8". Yep. I don't know if they'd want Johnny Furphy. They're going to need a Tobias replacement. Yeah. Like, Keyshawn George, I think, is too raw. Man. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you my two what, guys. What if, <laughs> what if they took Tyler Kolick? I'm not saying they're going to take him, but they need a point guard. You want Tyrese Maxey to just be a natural two? I mean, he can still handle, but. Man. Tristan De Silva's out there. You know what? Uh. I'm going Johnny Furphy. Okay. I'm just, I, I like that. I'm just going to go with the young 6'8 high level shooter mm-hmm. that has athletic upside. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going Johnny Furphy. I like that. Um, I'll tell you my other one because I really like this player and I'm way higher than anybody else on this player. This could be my Terrence Shannon spot. <laughs> Terrence still- Shannon that high. I mean, he's your guy. So yeah. you could take him. Um, but that high would be wild. To me, though, that's if. Philly is saying we're still competing for a title. 
and we're not doing like a soft like that's a soft rebuild. They team. have him twenty sixth on their big board, so right. I think he hey. has enough experience to go to that kind of team where they're True. they're looking for high level talent that's ready to go. That's the only reason I say it. Um, okay, so Johnny Furphy going yeah. outside of Maxi, I didn't really know what shooting they had. That's like the main reason I went. With yeah, Johnny no, Furphy. I that that's why I was thinking too that Furphy, like Furphy, Terrence Shannon, somebody like yeah. that. Like Buddy Heel didn't do much for him. Yeah, he he can shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, Lakers. I'm not taking Bronny. The JJ James. Redick pick. I'm not taking Bronny James. Um, Tom. What do the Lakers take? What do they want? What do they need? What are their hopes and dreams, Joey? I mean, probably uh, Tristan De Silva probably fits into their team pretty well. He shot good from three. That's what LeBron needs. What other guards do they have that can shoot? D'Angelo Russell sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so. But around LeBron and AD, yeah. you need defense and shooting. Mm-hmm. They need some. They need a few more shooters. Yeah. So, yeah. It's up to you, sir. <laughs> mm. I think I know who I would take in this spot. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, again, it kind of depends on how they feel about D'Lo or if they want him to be there too. But they have they have Austin Reeves, D'Lo. Who's their three? Oh, no, they were playing Vanderbilt at the four, weren't they? Well, he didn't play most of the season, so. Oh. I'm going Tristan De Silva. Okay. I, I just think, I just think he could fit in there. Sit in the corner, make some threes. I kind of think he might be like a Rui Hachimura clone, but yeah, maybe a better shooter. Who knows? He, he could be. Um, but again, is that is that a bad thing for them to have more shooters? Like you said, I mean, Rui isn't he? Rui Rui can hit shots sometimes, and other nights he disappears. Yeah. So he wasn't the most valuable for the Lakers, right? Like the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I just think maybe De Silva could get some good guidance from LeBron. And be, be decent. So okay. I'm I'm gonna go to Silva. Who who would you have gone? I think Bob Carrington. Yeah, I mean that was the other one that was a thought in my mind. And again, yeah. it's it's what they think they want to do with uh, D'Angelo Russell, which would change things. If they, if I knew like they wanted to get rid of him, I probably would immediately take Bob Carrington. But yeah. Orlando, you got a lot of guards, budding young team. You got some star forwards. I think those things are kind of sewn up. Now I like Wendell Maybe. Carter. I like Wendell Carter. I don't love him. Yeah. Who's there? Oh, I'll, I love Mo Wagner just because he's a Michigan guy and the energy. Mm-hmm. But you probably kind of want a little bit of a higher upside for your bigs. Yeah. Like kind of a guy that can combine both of what Mo Wagner and Wendell Carter does. Mm-hmm. Some defensive upside and some offensive upside. So I'm gonna go Kalel Ware okay. from Indiana. Yeah, he showed he can hit the three. He's got some moves in the paint too. He can block shots. Mm-hmm. So he can he does a lot of things on both sides of the ball, and I think he could help the Magic in that way, being a stretch five that can defend. Yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd go Kalel Ware for Orlando. Okay. Yeah, I like that pick. They're they're a, a spot where. You know they just made the playoffs, so they can they can kind of pick and choose where they want to be. They can be more uh, specific with their picks. Yeah. Um. So I don't mind it. Um. Toronto's on the clock. Their boy just got paid, big yeah. time paid. Yeah. Whether or not he'll be a superstar, who knows? But. Yep. Scotty Barnes got his yeah. max rookie extension. He played well enough to get the money. Yeah, and he's still a very good player. Um, if you take away his. Skills challenge debut, but you know, listen, Joey, <laughs> who's Toronto's big man? Jakob? Uh, no, Malik, I'm I'm already ahead of you. Listen, mother he's from, from Canada, he's from Canada, he's from Canada, Joey. No, I I would I think it's a good fit. I I think listen, you got quickly, you got you got the guys from New York, you got Scotty Barnes, you got a few shooters. I, I mean. Yeah. What are, what, are, what are we doing, Joey? I don't know where else they would go, to be honest. Um, maybe 
I don't know. They're they're a, a rough spot to be completely honest. They're stuck in like the, they're stuck in the middle. Yeah, they're they're in the like yeah the rough middle. Let me just verify their who's their point guard. Probably quickly. Probably Emmanuel quickly. Oh jeez. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. So they could use like a Bub Carrington. They but could, I, but yeah. I think at this point, I think for the Raptors, they just need they need some fun in their team. Yeah. I'm going with Zach Eady. I love it. It just makes sense. Jakob Pertl, yeah. he's fine, but he, we know what yeah. he is. He's the most serviceable big man. One of the most serviceable big men in the league. Yeah. And if Zach Eady can actually stretch the floor a little bit, maybe they got something. Yeah. There there will be a weird like, team. May- oh, they I forgot they have RJ Barrett too. Yeah. That's so like they, the New York guys, quickly and Barrett. Yeah. And then they have like Scotty Barnes. Their four yeah. would be It's a it's a weird, funny team. Yeah. But they got shooters. Yeah. Listen, in summer league, make Zach Eady make take at least five three point temp, up to, attempts a game. Yeah. Make him take those. Sure. But again, I think that would be fun. So we'll we'll do it. Like all it. right. We probably only have time for two picks. Okay. Because right. only got a couple minutes, which means I can leave so, off on New Orleans, which is fun. I got Cleveland on the board at twenty. You got a new coach. A really good hire, in my opinion, in mm-hmm. Kenny Atkinson. You got your guards. Donovan Mitchell looks like he's gonna he wants to return. Mm-hmm. You got Evan Mobley, you got Jared Allen, you got good pieces. They could use a forward. Mm-hmm. They could use a guy. Like, Karis LeVert is really good off the bench. Yeah. He's a guard, though. Yeah. Isaac Okoro looks like he's not going to really work out. Max Struess is a two. Mm-hmm. Who are your best forward options right now? You got Kyle Filipowski. <laughs> Stretch four. Tijon Salon. I mean, you could go Terrence Shannon, maybe. I'm not sure. Ryan Dunn is like an all-defensive force. You could consider Ryan Dunn if you want to just lock down at the three, four, and five. Mm-hmm. Tijon Salon. Tijon Salon. I'm just going to keep bringing it up. <laughs> I mean, they are a playoff team, so like they could, yeah. again, they're in that mold where they can they take could a risk. They could take a risk, but how long are you? He's not going to play much. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. Like in the eight or the seven, eight man rotation, Tijon Salon isn't fitting. Right. And you got Imani Bates, who, like, yeah, who knows? Come, come, come on, man. Like, yeah. I think they've got um I forgot his last name. Dean he wears number thirty two. He's a stretch four. Dean Wade? Yeah, Dean Wade. He he hits like timely threes for them mm-hmm. and has games where he really sticks out. I think Kyle Filipowski could be a better version of Dean Wade. Yeah. A guy that comes off the bench and can give you more offense than just threes, but also can hit threes. Right. And he can pass some. He can pass off the post. Mm-hmm. So I would go Kyle Filipowski. Okay. Yeah, I, I would go with him at that spot. Okay. I like Kyle yeah. Filipowski. You got a lot. You got a bunch of guards. You got at least four or five guards that can shoot or give you offense. Yeah. Pick, get another forward that can give you some offense. Right. Yeah, I like that. All right, New Orleans on the clock. It's gonna have to be our last pick of the day. Your guys. Your guys are on the board, Joey. <sighs> They're in a rough. This spot. is a big decision. They're in a rough spot. You can destroy the franchise with this pick. I hope you know that. Well, it sounds like they're moving on from Brandon Ingram. Or they want yeah. to. The experiment didn't go how they wanted it. Uh, they need a true point guard, but some people still believe in Dyson Daniels. Listen, I don't know if I do. I I kind of like Tyler Coley right I'm here. I'm not kidding you. I kind of like it. Bub Carrington is there. Tyler Kolick is there. Bub Carrington is there, but, but he's, Tyler yeah, Kolick is he's a little more shooter more, than point guard. Right. And Tyler, Tyler Kolick is a creator. Right. So he pairs better with Zion, pairs better with CJ. Yeah. I don't love Tyler Kolick. I think I've said that in the past, but I do think he fits good. I think they need a true, true point guard. So yeah. I'm going to agree. I, I'm going to go with Tyler Kolick. Let's go. At 21. Yeah. Even though I won't love it, won't love it but if he makes the team better, no, I also think like there there's a chance that they could like get Jamal Shedd later. Yeah, and I think that would be Jamal Shedd and Jose Alvarado as your point guards. Yeah, that's that's real feisty. Right. I yeah. also think they're another one that could, you know, 
make a, a reach for like Terrence Shannon or something. Yeah. Um, I think he would be like their three Terrence or something. Terrence Shannon probably goes in the few picks after this. Yeah. Cause he could be their three pair alongside CJ McCollum, Jordan Hawkins, stuff like that. They can make it work. Um, and then like you said, get a, a point guard late. So yeah. he would help a lot in Milwaukee. He could. Yeah. All right. That's uh, all the time we have. We figured we probably wouldn't be able to get through the first round, which is fine. Um, Again, like New York has two picks, and they just traded for Mikael Bridges. Yeah, and did they did they trade those picks or? I don't know. I didn't. I'm not sure. I thought everything was updated. They're still listed at back to back. Yeah, so we'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure they still have those ones. Um, but gonna be hopefully a fun draft tonight. Gonna be interesting. Um, I'm interested to see who sneaks into the late first round. But um, any final thoughts, Malik? What do you want Detroit to do? Dalton connector bust or that's what I'd love, but it's not happening. Okay. They're they're taking a young guy with upside again, again, Joey. Potential, Joey. That word. How does that word make you feel? Potential um, makes me feel sick. <laughs> a little bit yeah. sick. I'd take the high floor over the high upside yeah. right now, but I I'd take Cody Williams over Bozellis. That's just me. Yeah, I'd take Cody Williams. I've said it a hundred times. Anybody but Bozellis. Get ready to be disappointed, Joe. <laughs> it's been views from the sidelines. We'll see you guys next. Uh.